Can food give you stronger, better erections? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm going to be talking about how your diet can help you get stronger erections and even help you maintain your erections throughout your life. This is not a video where I'm just gonna put up foods and be like, eat this, eat this, eat this, eat this. We're gonna talk about why this makes sense and what kind of things you can do for your lifestyle to help you improve your sexual function. Now, I think it's important to understand that the number one reason that people start having weaker erections is because of blood flow issues. To have a strong erection, you need to have good blood flow into the penis. Now, why does blood flow become a problem? One is the arteries of the penis are pretty small. So before you see problems anywhere else in your body, like heart issues, brain issues, you're going to see problems in your penis. So this is things like high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, all of these sorts of things can cause issues, which can then cause narrowing to the blood vessels to the penis. So these sorts of foods are meant to help improve the health of your blood vessels to allow blood to flow in better. And also some of these foods may help with nitric oxide. Now nitric oxide is the ignition for erection. It's released by blood vessels to start the cascade of signals to then create an erection. So some of these foods will help the release of nitric oxide. So let's get to it. The most studied dietary intervention for sexual function is the Mediterranean diet. And there is some really strong evidence for the Mediterranean diet. Now this does not mean that other diets are bad or not good, but I'm going to break down exactly what factors of the Mediterranean diet help. But let me explain where this data is at the current time. So in 2020, a study was released in JAMA, which is a big medical journal. And this looked at data from over 21,000 men who were enrolled in something called the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study. Now, they assessed these men and they looked at what sort of dietary patterns they were having using a questionnaire. And it asked questions about what sort of food intake they had, about every four years. And they were then followed for an average of about 10.8 years. Now this is a really long time to follow people. I wanna be clear, most studies are like one year, three years, 10 years, over 10 years, because average is 10.8 years, is a really rigorously well done study. And so they looked at these guys saying, like, what are they eating and do they develop erectile dysfunction? And so what they found was that men who had the highest category of adherence, meaning they're really stuck to the Mediterranean diet, had a 22% lower risk of developing erectile dysfunction compared to men who were in the lowest category of adherence, meaning they didn't follow these dietary constraints. They also looked at something called the AHEI, or Alternative Healthy Eating Index. And this is a scored diet, essentially index, and it scores diets based on the consumption of certain what they called healthy foods. And these healthy foods were fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, legumes, and fish. And they limited the intake of red and processed meats, sugar-sweetened beverages, trans fats, and sodium. And essentially they found that men who were in the top 20% of index had a 22% lower risk of ED compared to those who were in the lowest 20%. So very similar to the Mediterranean diet. And the strongest effect of this dietary change was in younger men. Now the Mediterranean diet and this AHEI diet are rich in several key components. That includes things like olive oil, which are high in monounsaturated fats and antioxidants, particularly oleocanthal, which has anti-inflammatory properties. Also fruits and vegetables. Now these are great, obviously. They're high in flavonoids, which I'm gonna talk about next. These improve blood flow by enhancing the production of nitric oxide, as I mentioned earlier. There's also whole grains, which are rich in fiber and nutrients that support cardiovascular health. And what's good for your heart is good for your penis. Fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids, which also have anti-inflammatory properties and can improve endothelial function. So that's blood vessel cell function. So overall, having a diet that is sort of optimizing a multitude of things that's good for your heart and your blood vessels. Now I mentioned earlier flavonoids. 
flavonoid rich foods. Now these are essentially found in plant-based foods uh, and drinks, including things like fruit, vegetables, tea, herbs, and wine. And these essentially work by reducing inflammation, inhibiting the oxidation of LDL, and which is a sort of cholesterol that's bad for your body, and increasing the production of nitric oxide again. So this then helps promote healthy blood vessel function, and it reduces cardiovascular risk or heart risk. So bottom line, you're getting better heart health, better blood flow, and ultimately better blood flow to your penis. So there was another large scale study, which was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it followed over 25,000 men. Again, these are two really big studies we've talked about so far. They followed them from 1986 to 2010, and they measured their diet, again, using food frequency questionnaires, every four years, so very similar to the other study, and they looked at their erectile function using a five-point scale. They then found that men who regularly consumed foods that were rich in flavonoids tended to have a nine to 11% reduced risk of developing erectile dysfunction. And the strongest association were foods with like berries, citrus fruits, and red wine of course in moderation. Now, fruit intake was associated with a 14% reduction in ED. Citrus fruits were associated with a 12% reduction in ED. And regularly blueberry intake, so blueberries specifically, saw a 22% reduction in ED. And when you combined high flavonoid intake with physical activity, those men had a 21% lower risk of ED compared to those who did not take flavonoids in and had no physical activity. These specific types of berries, like blueberries and strawberries, are rich in what's called anthocyanins. And citrus fruits, like oranges and grapefruits, are high in flavonones. So both of these types of flavonoids actually work again by improving blood flow and enhancing nitric oxide production. In fact, in another case control study, looking at just 350 young men, they found that for each additional daily fruit portion that they consumed, it lowered their ED risk by 38%. Let me say that again. If they ate fruit one serving a day, it reduced their risk of ED by 38%. Now the next food group we're going to talk about is nuts, specifically pistachios. Now pistachios are interesting and they're specifically good because they're a good source of one plant-based protein. They have fiber, antioxidants, and they're rich in the amino acid arginine. Now if, you've, if you're new here, L-arginine, I've talked about arginine before, but it's a precursor for nitric oxide. And oftentimes people will look to take supplements like L-arginine for the improvement of erectile function. So pistachios specifically have a high amount of arginine. So there was a study, it's a very small study, but they looked at 17 married men who had ED for at least 12 months. Now these guys were then given 100 grams of pistachios daily for three weeks. And what they saw in this very small study was that they saw a significant improvement in erectile function and blood flow on what we call a penile Doppler. Now this is important because a Doppler is a measurement of blood flow going into the penis. And we often use that to assess how good vascular function is in the penis in men who have ED. The fact that they're actually using an objective measurement like a penile Doppler is, is actually particularly interesting because now we're seeing that not only is you're seeing improvement based on what the patient is telling you and validated questionnaires, but you're also seeing improvement on a validated instrument like an ultrasound. Now in another study, they also included nuts, just generally 60 grams a day of mixed nuts, which was like 30 grams of walnuts, 15 grams of almonds, 15 grams of hazelnuts. And so in this smaller study, they found that young men who didn't have any issues with ED who ate these mixed nuts had an improvement in orgasmic function and sexual desire. So, you know, if you enjoy nuts, it is useful to incorporate a small amount, like 100 grams a day, of nuts into your diet. Now be careful, if you eat too many, they are very high in calories, high calorie density, so they can make you increase weight. Now the next one might surprise you, this is caffeine. Now how would coffee or caffeine help improve sexual function? 
So coffee and or caffeine cause relaxation of the blood flow or the arteries that carry blood flow into the penis, as well as the smooth muscle of the penis because they have a vasodilatory effect. This then causes increased blood flow to the penis, which can help sexual function. So there was a study published in PLOS1 that looked at 3,700 men. And they looked at what's called NHANES data. NHANES is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. So they take data from the survey where they ask men about how much caffeine they're taking based on four different drinks, essentially coffee, soda, both regular and locale soda, tea, and energy drinks. And they then measure how much caffeine they're taking in, as well as do they have uh, issues with sexual function, which is based on surveys. And so ultimately they found that men who consumed 85 to 170 milligrams of caffeine per day, which is about two to three cups of coffee, had a 42% lower risk of erectile dysfunction compared to those who didn't drink coffee. Now, this was even true for men who had high blood pressure or who were overweight or obese. So that's really impressive because a lot of this stuff that we're finding on food really is all done in young, healthy people. So you don't know if you have other issues like high blood pressure, is it going to help you? But it does help these particular men. It did not was not seen in men with diabetes. However, it's important that you use moderation. If you drink too much caffeine, it can obviously have negative effects. One is that it can affect your sleep quality and it might even irritate your bladder. Now let's talk about some foods that people often talk about that might improve sexual function, but they don't have a lot of strong scientific evidence. One of these is watermelon. So watermelon contains citrulline, which our bodies then convert to arginine, which is again a precursor to nitric oxide. And so there have been studies that have looked at watermelon intake in seeing how much it improves arginine in the body, but not specifically in the realm of erectile dysfunction. So what they found is that drinking something like six glasses of watermelon juice can improve the levels of arginine in your body. Another one that might have benefit but has not been extensively studied is dark chocolate. Specifically, dark chocolate with at least 70% of cocoa content in it has a lot of flavanols in it or flavonoids. And this will then increase levels of nitric oxide in the blood, which can improve, again, blood flow and vascular function. Lastly, nitrates. So when you look at nitric oxide, they found that essentially consuming nitrate rich foods like spinach, beetroot juice, arugula can increase nitric oxide levels in the body. And this then therefore may potentially improve blood flow and erectile function, although no direct study has been done. Now, how much nitrate do you really need? So when you look at nitrate metabolism, it's suggested that consuming somewhere between 450 and 550 milligrams of nitrate about two and a half hours before the physical activity or sexual activity in this case can lead to noticeable improvements in blood flow. So how much nitrate is in spinach and all those other things? So spinach contains about 250 milligrams of nitrate per 100 grams serving. Arugula contains 450 grams per 100 gram serving. And beetroot also contains around 250 milligrams of nitrate per 100 grams. So you would need to have at least one or two servings of these things to see the benefit. It's really important. While certain foods might help, Others can harm you and can make erectile function worse. One is excessive alcohol consumption. Now, when you drink a lot of alcohol, it can cause ED. And so you can check out my video on whiskey dick where I talk about this and we know that chronic alcohol abuse can be associated with sexual dysfunction. Also, while this is not a food, smoking. If you are smoking, it will kill your erections. So stop smoking. Uh, that is one modifiable thing that you can do today to help your erections. Now here's some tips. How can you incorporate some of these foods into your diet without dramatically changing your life? So one is you may want to start your day with a smoothie. So you can incorporate things like berries, spinach, and maybe even a little bit of dark chocolate. You may want to start adding fatty fish into your meals two to three times a week if you can. 
Um, and then consider having a snack of pistachios rather than having Doritos. But again, make sure you're only getting about 100 grams. You don't really need more than that uh, because as I mentioned, it is very calorie dense and easy to overeat. You can also add leafy greens to just whatever you're eating, your sandwiches or your salads, um, and it really doesn't change too much. And if you enjoy coffee, drink it. Uh, <laughs> don't feel like you have to abstain as long as it doesn't affect your sleep and your quality of life in other ways like your bladder. Um, coffee may be helpful for sexual function. And a good rule of thumb is to try to get whole grains instead of refined carbohydrates. So wheat bread instead of white bread, um, try to get whole wheat pastas and cook them at home, and try to use things like olive oil or avocado oil as your primary cooking oil. But the most important thing is that you want to make sustainable changes. You don't want to change everything all at once. Maybe make one small change and see how that goes. Small consistent changes are what is going to make a big difference over time. This is not a race. This is you and the the rest of your life. Now, if you find that fresh fruits or vegetables are pretty expensive in your uh, area, it may be useful to just get some frozen fruit. You can always remember that frozen fruit and vegetables are often just as good and just as nutritious as fresh and definitely more affordable. You can also get canned fish that can be a good alternative to fresh fish for a more cost-effective alternative. So just to recap, you want to aim to incorporate a balanced diet that has fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fish if you can, healthy fats, and this is not only for your heart, but good for your erections. We've also discussed things like omega-3 fatty acids, flavonoids, L-arginine and night dietary nitrates. So all of those things can be optimized through your diet and help improve blood flow and vascular health to your overall body as well as to the penis. And lastly, while dietary factors can help, they are not a cure. You're not just gonna start eating pistachios every day and magically your erections are gonna get better. You have to do a full evaluation of your overall health, optimize your high blood pressure, your cholesterol. If you're diabetic, maintain your sugars. These are the most important things to regulate so that you don't continue to develop issues with erections. So make sure you talk to your primary care doctor and get yourself evaluated to make sure there's no underlying factors that might be causing issues with your erections. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.